Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com coming to you today from the shores of the mighty River Nile. In order to bring you episode number 15 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're learning how to make Arduino and Python work together. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to teach you is I'm going to teach you my solution to the homework assignment, which I gave you in episode number 14. And what that was, was, was to take that simulation that we did of a three-dimensional room with a marble bouncing back and forth along the x-axis and expand that to where that marble is bouncing in three dimensions, that it has an x uh, an X component of motion, a Y component of motion, and a Z component of motion. How many of you guys were successful in doing that? If you were successful, leave a comment down below. I am legend. If you weren't successful, leave a comment down below. I fold it up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair, okay? But what we need to do now is I need to get out of your way and what we can do is we can fire up a new Visual Studio code and so we will come over to this view and we will fire up the most excellent Visual Studio code. Now in doing this we don't want to start completely from scratch. We want to start where we left off in lesson number 14 and the best way to do that is to come over to www.toptechboy.com if I can get that to pop up. There it is. And then I need you to use the happy little search bar here to search on using an Arduino with Python lesson 14, model a moving marble in a room or something close to that. You'll come down here and you'll find this code. You can click on the two little pages that will copy the code to your clipboard. Then we're going to come back over here and remember we are working in this Pi Arduino folder. We're going to make a new file and we're going to call that <coughs> passdata-11.py and the .py is kind of important and boom, fresh new Python program just waiting for you to write. And so we're going to come over here and we are going to get out of the Explorer view so that you can have a little bit more to look at here. Right mouse click and paste that code that we had from last time. We do always want to confirm that the world is in proper operational order and that we can successfully copy and paste without an error. And so let's run this thing and just make sure that it works. <clears throat> Boom, there's our room. Marble is moving back and forth, bouncing off the left wall and bouncing off the right wall. Now, one of the things that I want to just remind you of, one of the real things that I wanted you to learn last week, and so I'm going to say it again because it's so important, using parametric design and parametric modeling and not using too many parameters. If you look at my real parameters, I had the X dimension of the room, the Y dimension of the room, and the Z dimension of the room. What the tendency is, is for you to use too many parameters, like you would define the width and height of the back wall, the width and height of the forward wall, the width and height of the side wall ceiling, and you would have like if there's one, two, three, four, six sides to this thing, you would have like 24 parameters because you would put in separate parameters for the size of each wall and separate parameters for the position of each wall. But what you have to see is all of the walls share the same height. Therefore, you need one parameter and it takes care of all the heights. 
And then also what you got to see is the width of the front, back, floor, and ceiling are all going to be the same. So you've got to collapse it down from something like 24 parameters down to the ones that you need, the four. Also, there's a tendency for you to define the size of the wall and with parameters and then a separate set of parameters for the position. But what you got to see is the position of the wall depends on the size of the room. You don't add another parameter because if you independently define the size of the walls and the position of the walls, you'll end up with a room that will break and have it not come together at the corners. And so just to kind of show that, let me just let me just come up here and I'm going to make the room a different size. I'm going to make it 25 by 8 by let's make it really something strange like 4. So a very strange sized room. Now let's run that. Okay, so you see it made it that odd sized room, but then what do you see? The room, it didn't break the model, that everything is still coming together at all the corners because I defined my parameters right. Okay, enough review. Let's jump in and let's make this work. I hope, I really hope you guys see how easy it is once I showed you how to do it in the X direction, how easy it is to do it in the other directions. And so what I showed you is you were worried in this original, in this original model that I just showed, you change direction when the edge of the marble hits the edge of the wall, you change direction. When the edge of the marble hits the other edge of the wall. Now we just got to do that same thing, but we got to think about the top edge hitting the ceiling, the bottom edge hitting the floor, and then the edge, the back edge hitting the back wall, and the front edge of the marble hitting the front edge. But with that picture that we drew last week, it's really all very, very similar. So what we had here is we kept track of the position of X and the increment of the X. What else do you think we need to do here? Well, we need to do the same thing for Y. That's the up and down direction. So we will have a Y position and we will have a Y increment <clears throat> that we change each time we go through. Okay, and then we are also so we have X, we have Y, then we also have to do that for Z. So we'll come and make marble position Z and delta Z. So now I have an X position, a Y position, and a Z position. Well, one thing that we're going to see is that each time through the loop, we need to not just increment the X position, but we also need to increment the what? The Y position. So marble Y is going to be equal to the old marble Y plus the delta Y. All right. And then what else? We are going to need to do that same thing with Z. So we're going to need to say marble Z is equal to marble Z plus delta Z. Okay, now why does this not like marble all of a sudden? Did I break something? I did something crazy here. Okay, that needs to be an uppercase. Okay, I kind of somehow hit a key I wasn't thinking. All right, that if statement looks good now. Right. Now, when we update the marble position, we need to not just update its X position. We also need to update its what? Marble Y. And then what else? We also need to update marble Z like that. Right. Now, if we run this just like this, what do you think is going to happen? Well, first of all, if we have an error in here, it, the code might crash, it might break. But if we don't have an error, tell me what's going to happen. All right? Do you see what's going to happen? Let's run it. Okay. It goes to the top and it what? It jailbreaks. It doesn't bounce. It keeps going. Now, why did that keep going and not bounce? And the reason it kept going and not bouncing here in this if statement, I am checking if it's hitting the left wall or if it's hitting the right wall. 
I'm not checking if it's hit the ceiling or the floor or the front wall or the back wall. So what I have to do is I have to do this same type of thing. This was looking for left and right wall. And so now what we want to do is we want to look for, let's do the ceiling and the floor. So we will copy it and we will paste it. <clears throat> but now instead of looking at the right, <coughs> instead of looking at the right wall and left wall, we are going to look at the top of the marble plus the radius, the top of the marble plus the radius. And we're going to see if that has hit the ceiling minus half the wall thickness. Okay. And so it's a very similar argument, but we're just now dealing with Y's instead of X's. And then the wall thickness is the wall thickness. That doesn't change, right? That doesn't change. And the marble radius doesn't change. But now in the Y direction, we need to be switching the direction of Y if we hit the ceiling or hit the floor. And then we also need to in here as well, remember to increment Y inside of here. And I am not getting caps here. Why am I not getting caps there? If you guys watch those squigglies, it really helps you see if you've made a mistake or not. Okay, so I think Y should be happy now. Now we need to just do the same thing with Z. So I'm going to paste again, get my if statements lined up. And so now we're going to be looking at the front wall and the front. This would be the front side of the marble here, the front side of the marble and comparing it to the front wall. And then this is the back side of the marble, back side of the marble and compare it to the back wall like that. If this isn't making sense, go in and look at that picture that I drew last week. Okay, I really think this might work. Let's hold our breath this time. Oh, okay. Boom, look at that. Did you see that? Oh, jailbreak. Did it jailbreak? It jailbroke. And it's on the front side. Okay, so what did we do wrong that this thing jailbroke? Okay, it didn't crash, but that would be in the Z direction. And so, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What did I not do here? I didn't change the Z. So probably, probably that uh, if statement is right, but I just forgot to make all these Zs. Okay. Yep. For some reason, my shift key is not cooperating today. Okay, let's try again and let's see. Okay, boom on the top look good. Let's see how it looks on the bottom. Perfect on the bottom. Okay, and then let's see. Yep, it bounced off the back. So that's good. You just want to kind of look from the side and make sure, yeah, the front looks good. The back looks good. We are bouncing all correctly. So we have a functioning model here. And because we use parameters, we can just go in and change the X, Y, and Z of the room, get a radically different size room, and everything works. And so it's very easy to make changes, and it's very easy to make this thing work for any size of room that you want. Okay, guys, what I want you to do is for your homework, I just want you to make sure that you go back and understand what I did as far as the conditions for bouncing, understanding how that corresponded to the edge of the marble and the edge of the wall, and that for the ceiling and the floor and the front and the back and all the different walls. That's what I want you to look at and make sure that you understand that for next week. Also, what I want you to do is I want you to think now, where are we going with this? We have not, this didn't have really anything to do with Arduino, but you can imagine that this is going to come back and hook up with the Arduino. And so I want you to leave a, I want you to leave a comment down below 
where you think we are going with this project because I think next week things are really going to get interesting. I like making this. I think this simulation is interesting, but I think next week things are really going to begin to be interesting and fun. Now, what I will show you really quickly here, I will show you a quick view of my studio so that you can see that I am continuing to try to do a good job keeping my studio neat and clean. And you can probably also see that my uh, my cable management is becoming a little bit more difficult because as I'm getting more and more things hooked up, I've got more and more cables to deal with. So what I am doing right now is to just try to keep it kind of manageable on this side of the monitors. And then on the other side of the monitors, there are kind of cables running everywhere because you do have to somehow do something with the cables. But if you look at this, maybe this view of my studio would have some clue where we are going with this project in the future. Okay, guys, I hope you are having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. I am really, really having a great time with this, and I'm really enjoying showing you how to do parametric design and parametric modeling because I know how important that's going to be on our future lessons in our future class in a different class than this one, but an upcoming class where we're going to be learning to use Fusion 360 and then do 3D printing from the designs that we're doing in Fusion 360. And if you understand this parametric design, you're going to be so much further ahead. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, because when you leave a comment and give us a thumbs up, that helps us with the old YouTube juice. And that ensures that YouTube will offer this video to more people. And that's important because we need more people coding and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter coming to you from the shores of the mighty River Nile. I will talk to you guys later.